Hello again and welcome back to the vlog. It's been about three weeks since the last episode, I think. Uh, right now I'm in the middle of rehearsals with Bastard Assignments and Mock Rep for a performance which is happening on Tuesday the 28th of November. Um, and I don't have a piece of my own in that, I'm just a performer, so it's very time consuming and fun, uh, but yeah, there's, there's no new piece going on for that. Um, so today I'm going to talk a bit about Community of Objects, which we performed at Huddersfield at the beginning of this week. Um, a bit more on White Space, uh, which was workshopped at Open Scores Lab at the beginning of the month. Um, I've got some more drawings and a new sort of notebook, sketchbook project, which I don't know how that relates to any of this, but these things tend to show up later on, so I should mention it now at least. So Community of Objects again. Um, so for Huddersfield, I think the big thing that was worrying me about that originally was that we had to fit it into 10 minutes. It's a piece that tends to sprawl and on its own we've never managed to do it under 15 minutes but it absolutely had to fit into 10 because we had a quite a limited um, space for our set. So one of the big changes for this performance was that we were using a timer um, which I had just as a phone uh, on the desk in front of me and we set up sort of signals where at five minutes I took my gloves off which then triggered everybody else to finish up with the box they were on. Uh, at eight minutes I whispered that it was eight minutes and that sort of went down the line. Um, I did find that the time sort of limitation it, it gave a certain energy to the performance that hadn't been there before. Um, while I like the piece while it sort of sprawls and just takes its time and there's something very pleasing about that duration and really sort of getting to grips with whatever's in the box and thoroughly exploring it. Uh, this was also really good because I felt it brought out a lot more fun um, and it was, I, I think I can say without hesitation, the most ludicrous performance of this piece um, that there's been yet. It was, um, yeah, it was really great. There was a lot of energy, a lot of fun, um, vast amounts of humour in it and um, we got a really great audience reaction. So. That was good. Um, I had been a little freaked out in advance because I found out just uh, about a week before the performance that the venue is actually twice the size of anywhere we've ever performed before and so because it's a very intimate piece and it's very sort of inwards focused and you've got these boxes that aren't particularly huge and can't be particularly huge because of the sorts of paper that you're using as a limit to sort of how big you can make them without them sort of collapsing in on themselves. Uh, so I'd been quite worried about that and there were several choices I made for this performance that were more about the venue than they were about the piece, uh, which was an interesting way of working and at the time it felt very unsatisfactory but I think it paid off. Um, so I was thinking more about, in terms of what goes in the boxes, I was thinking more about things that could be comprehensible from a distance, something that had a very uh, particular sound or it was really obvious what you're doing like eating something um, either that or things that would be completely invisible even to people really close up um, the one box that actually had brand new content had a dead spider in it um, that my was in in my partner's workshop and I, I gave him strict instructions about six weeks ago that he wasn't allowed to clean anything because I wanted that spider for Huddersfield um, so that was kind of great because he was all stuck in his web and I got him in the box and so you had to sort of look down and around and there's, there's no way anyone in the audience would have had really much idea of what was actually in there. Um, the size of the venue also uh, was a factor in deciding to not use the dust suits. Uh, I know I talked about this last time um, but as soon as I realized how big the venue was I just thought no we can't use them because sort of with the white on white thing, the white of the boxes and the white of the suits basically no one past the first few rows is going to be able to see what's going on at all so we just wore our blue outfits that we wear for Josh's extended play um, and I thought that worked very well I, I was very happy with with how it looked really um, I think one of the other things about sort of preparing for this was that we actually did a full run through of the set which we've never really had the luxury of doing before and obviously community of objects you can't really run because once you do that it's all destroyed. Um, so what we used was bits of paper and we just pretended and surprisingly I actually f found that all the guys in the group basically said that this was really helpful for getting into the mindset of the piece. It was really helpful for exercising the imagination and just getting into a sort of a playful zone and they all felt that 
that form of preparation really helped to bring a life to the performance when we did it for real a couple of hours later. So I'm thinking that's actually going to be a suggested activity that I'm going to put into the performance instructions. Because um, I've got another two performances of this coming up. There's one in a couple of weeks uh, where I'm presenting about the piece at Open Scores Lab. I'm hoping to do a version for two people. Uh, and then in March, plus minus, uh, doing it at a concert at City University in London. So I've still got things to think about with this. It's not going to go away. Um, and there's been a lot of this performance that's really sort of developed my thinking about the piece. And one of the most interesting things I found, because I had been thinking that this was really, we were really stretching it, because I think this is the fourth, fourth time that Bastard Assignments have performed it. And I had really felt that, no, this had to be it, this had, it had to stop, because it was just going too far. The piece is about the first time experience and everything should be fresh. I was really struggling to find new content for the boxes that the guys hadn't experienced before and I'd felt when we did it at Snape Maltings that the boxes that had been experienced already at Brighton were very much flatter than the things that were new. Um, however, what I found with Huddersfield was that we seem to have kind of gone through that flatness and out the other side. Um, and a lot of the pieces about sort of natural behavior, natural interactions. And it seems that sort of with the familiar content, but being so familiar with the piece and what's expected, and the performers have all internalized a lot of those instructions that were in early versions. Um, so there were things like you open a box and there's an instruction saying stamp on this box, which is designed to get the performer out from behind the table and sort of breaking that zone to go anywhere on the stage. Um, but all of that's been internalized, so I no longer need a box that says stamp on this box because 10 to 1, so one of us is going to get up and move around and stamp on a box. Um, and so it's changed like that and it's become a lot more relaxed. And my concerns were at Snake Maltings it felt quite acted and unnatural. And that seems to have all gone and it was very much just like any old bastard's conversation. It was very, very natural, very intimate, and um, yeah, it was it was great. I was really happy. <laughs> uh, but there's definitely something to think about for me there, I think, in terms of what the piece is and what it's doing and what it's really about and where it's going to go next, too. So we did white space uh, as a workshop at Open Scores Lab at Bath Spire University at the beginning of the month, which was fantastic and really helpful. Uh, up until that point, I'd been thinking of it very much as a solo piece, very much about me and my spaces, especially the studio, um, but also with a view to taking it to Alderborough and maybe trying it in different spaces there, just to see sort of how I worked with that. Uh, so this was a real chance to sort of twist that around and think about it as, to see what potential it had as an ensemble piece. Uh, so I decided to use three performers, and I made up, quite quickly, <laughs> another couple of, well, parts, really. Um, so it's it's like three separate notebooks now with related content, but yeah, they're, they're each doing their own thing. Um, and three of the members of the lab performed that, and I kept out of it and just observed, which was really helpful, actually, because I think when you're in it, it, it is hard even when you're videoing it to really get a sense of what it could be and obviously with video if that's all you've got to go on then once you're out of the frame of the video then you're not seeing what's going on um, so yeah it was it was really helpful actually and I found the discussion afterwards was great there was quite a lot of discussion for both versions we did two versions um, so the first version we used the entire space of the room which was a seminar room at Bath Spa University. So you had tables and chairs and people sitting around in odd places. And so the performers were instructed to map what they had in their scores, which are sort of portrait orientation pages across the room, which was much more landscape. And so they, they had to kind of mentally stretch that space um, and work within that, negotiating the space with the other performers and the furniture and the audience as well, and sort of work within those parameters. Uh, so that was really interesting um, 
to see how they did that and the different ways that they related, different ways they interpreted uh, the figures in the score too. There were, there were sort of some quite different approaches that I hadn't thought of, which was brilliant. Uh, and then the second version, we shrank the performance space so that the proportions were much more like those of the page, and we moved a table so that it was a completely clear space. So the performers were much closer to each other, and they didn't have to avoid any furniture. And so they were each other's own obstacles. And at this point I also added in some sound, um, which I just wanted to keep small, uh, but just to start to see how sound could relate to what was going on in the piece and so what I set up was that because the people are the obstacles then was that if someone else is getting in your way uh, as a performer um, once you come up against them and they're blocking you you just go shh and that's it and that was all the sound content um, yeah and it was it was a good start it's it's certainly not a finished thing yet but it was really nice to be adding in some sound and seeing how that felt and what was needed. I felt there needed to be a lot more kind of clashes for that to work texturally. It was very sparse and um, yeah I, I need to think more about this. Um, but the discussion was really helpful and there were quite a lot of things that came up, especially from the performers, about what it was like to perform this score, which was really interesting for me given that it had come from a place that was so much, you know, about me. <laughs> so one of the things that came out was that with the scale of the figures in the score, um, one of the performers said that when performing the, the really small figures, he felt very vulnerable and that the scale of the figure was very much tied to the emotional quality um, of sort of of that bit of the performance, uh, which I thought was quite fascinating actually, and it did kind of tie in with what I'd found with doing my own versions. Um, and the other thing that came up in particular was that several of the performers sort of were talking about the orientation of the score and which way up it goes, and which direction are you going in, and how do you read this map? Um, which way is forward? Which way is back? Uh, and one performer actually tried turning the score as he went along, which was a, a really interesting experience. It was good to watch. Um, 
also interesting in that he felt he got completely turned around and started going backwards at one point. <laughs> so that was really, really interesting. So I've got a lot to think about um, with this piece and where that's going to go next. I haven't done anything else with it yet because Huddersfield and, yeah, current rehearsal period, etc. So there's been a lot of other stuff happening. Um, but I feel that there's some real, there's a real opportunity to stretch that further and it could possibly even be, become a piece for Bastard Assignments to perform at some point. So I'm going to take that to Alderborough in December and um, have a play around with it with the guys there and just see see where that can get to really. So the other stuff I've been doing over the last three weeks has been mostly drawing. Um, there have been a few more drawings in the series I've been working on, which I've shown you a few of, uh, which is based on scribbles of varying sorts. So I've been sort of testing out a few different things with that. Um, and they're all on Instagram. I don't think I'll show them all here because there's quite a few of them this time around. Um, but that's that's gradually developing and it's sort of feeding into other bits of what I'm doing, mostly research side of things, although it's obviously it's very difficult to untangle research from practical work when you're doing a practice-based PhD. Um, so that's been progressing and it's been really satisfying working on that. Uh, but I've taken a little hiatus in the last couple of weeks to start a new project, which is an altered book project. So I've got a pre-existing printed book um, that I'm basically scribbling all over. Um, <laughs> this has been really interesting to start and it's got a lot to do with thinking about my notebook and my studio and sort of how they're actually very different spaces and I think white space was really a trigger for this because as I was performing it, you know, I've got so much stuff in the room and like I said last time I actually tripped over things um, and whereas the notebook is just blank pages and it's it's like a completely different kind of working environment and I, I was thinking sort of having been reading some books on sketchbooks where people described using pre-existing books as a base to just be a sketchbook and I was thinking sort of well you know what does it what would it mean if there was stuff already in the notebook how would that then change my working process how would that change how I think and it's been really interesting so far. I mean, it's early days yet, and I don't know whether it's going to be a useful thing to carry on with. But I think the thing that's coming out of it most is that having a text already there, having the structure of a book, is really... It's really forcing me to... I think I feel like I need to shout to be heard in it. And so the work that's coming out of that is very, very different from the type of drawings I've been doing up till now. It's a lot more violent, it's a lot louder, there's a lot more going on. And I'm finding also that instead, whereas normally I would sort of have a drawing in mind and I'll do it, and then it's done. Um, and it's very much a sort of, you know, one shot process, even if that is over a few days. But what I'm finding with this is that often I'll have an idea and then I'll move on to some other stuff, and then I'll come back to that, and it's like, no, that needs more. And then I'll do another layer over that, and then come back, oh, no, I, I could do this other thing. And so often it takes several passes at it to get it to a point where I feel, no, okay, that's, you know, th there's enough of me in that there that I feel like I can be heard on this page. Um, yeah, so it's just, just a different way of working and playing with some different materials from those I've been using. Uh, like I said at the start, I don't know. I don't know exactly how this is going to tie in. Obviously, as I mentioned, it's got connections to white space. It's got connections to the drawings I have been doing. Um, yeah, and I mean this kind of work though. I tend to do it, and then it creeps in and <laughs> becomes something later on. Um, I just don't know what that is yet. But it's yeah, it's an interesting experience to do it. So that's about it for this time. Uh, as always, if you've got any comments or questions, please leave a comment below. And I'll see you again in another couple of weeks. Thanks for watching. Bye.